Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Why don't we all stand this morning? Why don't we all stand if you can? There's, there's some of you here that you went through a bad week this past week. But guess what? You made it into the house of the Lord this morning. There's some of you in here, you had a good week this week, but you still made it into the house of the Lord this morning. There's, there's some of us, we're somewhere in between that, but you made it into the house of the Lord this morning. I want you to turn to somebody, lift up your right hand, give them a high five this morning. Why? Because you made it to the house of the Lord this morning. Don't you look at somebody else and with your left hand give them a high five say praise the Lord brother praise the Lord sister we made it you know the number eight in the Bible symbolizes a new beginning we just came through seven days and we're here for a new beginning this morning we're here for a play to, to lift our hearts up in worship to Jesus you may have went through a whole lot this whole week, but you have come into the house of refuge this morning. You have come into the place where the spirit of refuge is. That is the spirit of God. And you come into a house where you can come and you can forget all those things that happened this week. And you can focus on the one that can take care of everything. to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Do we have any saints here this morning? Hallelujah. Some of you have been rubbing some shoulders with some people and you don't want to remember some things that happened this morning. But you know what? You're rubbing some shoulders with some people and believe that there's a one true God this morning. Rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. You've already proved that you can lift up your hands by high five and say,
testimony tonight. Let there be a witness today of the healing touch of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask it in your name and we thank you and we praise you. Will somebody lift your voice with a praise to God right now for that healing virtue? Yes, Lord. I search the world He couldn't They're never enough And you came along You put me back together and Every desire is now satisfied Here in your love
out. The Bible tells us in a scripture, it says that if we don't praise him, he'll cause the rocks to cry out. I don't want a stone, I don't want a rock taking my place this morning. So I challenge you in this next song, if you're a little uncomfortable sometimes, I told the ladies this morning, I said, I dare you to sit in a different seat this morning, shock your pastor. So this morning, if you're a little uncomfortable, maybe raising your hands, maybe you're new to that, then just step out of your comfort zone and raise your hands a little bit higher. If you're a little bit more timid, I, I challenge you to sing the words out loud, just to take a step further in your praise and your worship. I am so thankful for the time that we spend together in worship. I think we have an amazing time, but I know that there's more and more and more for First Pentecostal Church. And I'm thankful for that this morning. So I challenge you to do your part. I challenge myself to do my part, not to let anybody take my place. Yes. So this morning, if we sing this next song, lift your hands with us, lift your voice with us as we worship the one true living King this morning.
your life? Do you feel him still moving in your midst? He's still moving. He's still alive and well. He still has everything you have need of right in the palm of his hand. All we have to do is come to him and say, Lord, I need you. God, I need a touch in my life. I need the Holy Ghost. I need deliverance. I need to be set free. Whatever you have need of today, he has what you need. He's still moving in our midst. Revival is still flowing in our midst. It's in our midst today. You can have what it is that you need today. I won't do it. I won't let them. I won't let them do it. I won't let them do it. I will praise him all by myself. I won't let him shout it out. I won't do it. Hallelujah. I won't. I will praise him first. Hallelujah. If you can, you may be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. My God, my God. He's still moving. God, we thank you this morning for an offering that we have to give to you. Lord God, we ask that you take this offering to God for keeping. Lord God, we ask that you bless everything throughout the kingdom that you need to be done. Lord God, we ask that you come back to this house. Bless the ones who have and the ones who have not. We ask that you give this offering to each other. The ones who need us, God, we ask that you be offered and you give freely. We thank you, God, for the ones that you give to us and the way you give them all. In Jesus' morning, we thank you. Can the church say amen? As you come this morning, remember to approach this message. Give by text and give. Give in the back of a kiosk. Amen. On the app, we have several ways you can give. You can just give on the way out the door on the way in. Amen. Praise God. Can you give God a clap of hands this morning? You love him? Clap your hands to the Lord this morning. I should get some announcements out of the way. Amen. Tonight's service at 6 o'clock. Amen. Hope to see everybody there with family. Amen. Praise God. Ladies, Zoom, Monday night, 6 o'clock. Ladies, Zooms, amen. 
Wednesday, mid-third, midweek matters on Wednesday, correct? <laughs> 7 o'clock Bible study, Acts 29 connection, kids connection, amen? FPC connection. It's February 27th. It's the SPC dinner, February 27th. Is that everyone? That's correct? That's everybody. everybody there's more details them. about that on the app. If they have any questions on the app, there is a link under the FPC family, or you can contact me or Sister Graham Chrysell, either one, if you have any questions about the FPC Connect dinner. Amen. And also the Princess, Princess Within, March the 4th and the 5th. Go ahead, Sister. If you are going to Princess Within, I need you to see me today. If you've already registered, that's good. If you haven't registered, see me today so we can guarantee that you get a T-shirt to wear Saturday. This is for ladies, young ladies, little ladies. Everybody will be blessed. It doesn't matter if you're 80 or 8 or however old you are, you will be blessed. I can promise you that. So make plans to go. See me today if you have any more questions about it. Amen. And at this time, we have a special from mother and daughter. No? No. Can we dismiss kids questions? There we go. Kids questions, y'all going to be dismissed, please. So like I said, at this time, we have a special from mother and daughter, Sister Gray, Sister McQueen. If you haven't heard them sing, you are in for a treat. Amen. It's a blessing to hear them sing this morning. God bless you. Just watch it with him this morning as you sing. Oh, the hand of fear gripped the crowd that day at Jerry's home. Oh, and the doctor shook his head and said, she's gone. You could feel the mother's heart break. You could hear him cry and moan. The little girl was only 12 years old. Over oh, somewhere in the distance, outlined against the sun, there came a man on a mission from the throne. They said, somebody's coming, but what they did not know, it was a promise coming down that dusty road. Oh, there's a promise coming down that dusty road. From his holy hands, healing virtue flows. He's got the key to what you need, just in hell he will defeat. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Oh, there's a promise coming down that dusty road. From his holy hands, healing virtue flows. He's got the key to what you need, just in hell he will defeat. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Well, the wonder turned to mocking when Jesus did speak. He said, your daughter's not dead, she's just asleep. Then he turned to the unbelievers and he told them all, go. They heard him say, leave me in death alone. Then he laid his hand upon that child and looked the death right in the eye. He said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Oh, with a voice that sound like thunder, he hurled death asunder. When he said, little girl, rise up and be healed. Oh, there's a promise coming down that dusty road. From his holy hands, healing virtue flows. He's got the key to what you need. Just in hell, he will defeat. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Oh, there's a promise coming down your dusty road. From his holy hands, healing virtue flows. He's got the key to what you need, and then hell he will defeat. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. He's got the key to what you need, and then hell he will defeat. There's a promise. Coming down that dusty road. Hallelujah. We have, you may be seated for just one moment. 
We have one more little video that we need to show this morning. We have an upcoming March 6th. Uh, we have our mission commitment service. It's a yearly service. It's an annual service that we do every year uh, where we resubmit our commitment that we're going to give to missions. Uh, and we have, thankfully, our church has truly been blessed. I believe uh, that this revival that we have been experienced uh, has been b given to us because of our faithfulness to giving as well as our faithfulness to all the other areas of the kingdom. But I believe when we started as a church giving to missions, uh, when we started purposely giving to missions, let me say that, not that we just had a service that we took up an offering, but we, we made up in our minds and our hearts that we're going to give to missions, that God would just begin to pour his blessings out on us. So uh, if you will, just watch this short video real quick. It's going to show, uh, it's going to introduce what we're going to do next, the Sunday after next. We have one Sunday between now and then, but we'll have another video next Sunday as well. But just watch this video quickly. And then we'll move on with the service. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you for a moment about why we should all give to missions. American Christians spend 95% of offerings on home-based ministries, but only one half of 1% to reach the unreached. In two weeks on March the 6th, your church will have a world missions commitment service. In Philippians 4, 10 through 12, the Apostle Paul thanked the church for giving to his missionary efforts. He finished this portion of scripture by saying in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Most of us have probably never thought of this verse in relations to how we can be a part of world missions. But I'm telling you that every single member of our churches with Christ's help can be involved in world missions. The Apostle Paul thanked the Philippian church for their participation in missions by saying that they encouraged him partially by sharing in his financial needs. When we give to world missions, it's one of the most selfless forms of giving that there is because no percentage of our gift goes to something that we can visibly touch or see. We release it with no personal agenda other than reaching people we will never meet or see. Your missions giving puts the go in the gospel. Brothers and sisters, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Let's work together for the purpose of reaching souls. March the 6th through the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ World Missions Commitment Service. We can all make a difference. God bless you and God bless our missionaries everywhere. Amen. We ask you to start now praying and just asking God what it is that you can do, what your family can do. And we ask God, and we ask you to ask God to help you to do that. So it's whatever goal you set that you can give, and uh, God, will, God will bless it. I promise you that. Are you excited about the word of the Lord being brought forth to us this morning? Amen. We're so excited that we have... Uh, the White family with us from Humble, Texas today. Uh, he did a tremendous job preaching at Midwinter Friday night in Carroll. I want to say thank you for all of you that made the effort to go down there. We showed a tremendous representation of First Pentecostal Church. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. When I pulled in the parking lot and y'all were all there, I started crying. I told Brother Brass I started crying like a big old baby. I said, because I remember the days when it was just me and him going or me, him, and our wife would go. We had 60-plus people show up to that service the other day. We had to rent two vans, took a Suburban, and I think three to four other cars. And I want to thank you, First Pentecostal Church, for supporting the efforts that we're a part of in the kingdom. And thank you for showing up and, and, and having a turnout as well as we did. I commend you for that. Thank you. Uh, that brings honor to Pastor Gray and I as well in the district. And I thank you very much for representing and coming and in, 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 uh, just showing First Pentecostal Church was there. and. We were strong there, and I hope you were blessed. I know you were blessed because I was in the service, and it was a great time. So, uh, But we're so excited that we have Brother Ron White with us today. He's going to be preaching for us this morning and this evening, uh, and so we're excited about that. So if everyone will stand as Brother White makes his way here to the platform, and just clap your hands unto him and the Lord, and just ask the Lord to anoint him today and speak to our hearts this morning.
Let's return that praise back unto the Lord, shall we? Introduce your right hand to your left hand. Give the Lord a great big hand clap this morning. He alone is worthy of the glory. He alone is worthy of the praise. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be here in the house of the Lord with you today. Glad to meet your acquaintance this morning. And I just want to let you know, in case you haven't figured it out yet, the Spirit of the Lord is in this house today. He's in this house today. I feel his presence. As a matter of fact, I could have just got along with a little bit more praise and worship a while ago. It's not often I get to be out in the in the congregation and, and I understand the duty of being on the platform, but I felt the presence of God in this place. I feel like God wants to do something this morning for somebody. Now you'll have to excuse me. I'm just a I'm just a shy guy that's trying his best to lead his family to heaven. But I believe today that God is walking up and down the aisles of this sanctuary. He hasn't left yet. And he's come looking for those that have needs. If you have a need this morning, don't leave without your need being met. Can I just say that this morning? Don't leave without your need being met. Because he's more than able this morning. To do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. And when we leave this place, we can leave in freedom. We can leave in victory. We can leave full of the Holy Ghost like never before. All because of the Lord Jesus. I wonder right now, if you just shout to God with a voice of triumph. Come on, would you shout with a voice of triumph today? Come on, there's going to be some triumph come out of this service. There's going to be some victory come out of this service. There's going to be some folks walk away different than they came in. Only because of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen this morning. While you're reaching for your Bible, turning to the book of Jeremiah chapter number 18, verses number 1 through 6 is where we'll be reading this morning. I'd like to give honor to your leadership here this morning. We want to give honor to Bishop and Sister Gray, Pastor and Sister McQueen this morning. So thankful for their friendship. So thankful for their ministry. Amen. We were talking last night, and apparently somewhere down the road in Kirbyville, Texas, there's an acquaintance somewhere, whether it's second or third cousins. I'm not sure, but it's on my wife's side. But there's some history there somewhere, and uh, we may get a chance to talk a little bit more about this this afternoon. I'm not sure, but I'm just glad that all things work together for the good to them that loveth the Lord. And we're in the fellowship of like faith and like brethren this morning. And uh, we appreciate them. I appreciate uh, Bishop Gray. The, I, I just want Bishop Gray to know there's never been a time that, that uh, I, I've, I've come up to him or, or been in his proximity that he's not made me feel good in some way. I mean, I, I, I understand that there may be other people he does the same thing with, but it almost feels personalized when he comes and hugs my neck. I, I told him this morning... I said, you know, one of the I, I, only thing better that could have been when the church prayed and Peter was let loose from prison, and while they were praying, Peter showed up on to the doorstep of the church. The only thing better than Peter showing up to the doorstep of the church, I believe, is when the man of God shows up at your door with donuts. He did that this morning. I'm going to tell you what, it blessed my family. Uh, you can tell that. So... I am so appreciative today. We are so thankful. We are so humbled and honored to be here in the house of God with you precious people this morning. The book of Jeremiah chapter number 18. I give honor to my family as well. Give honor to my wife and my boys. They're the ones that put up with me. They're the ones that make sure that I sit down when I need to sit down and I speak up when I need to speak up. And uh, I love them and appreciate them. My wife is my rock. And without her, I don't think I could do any of the things that I do. And so I appreciate her this morning as well. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter number 18, verses number 1 through 6. The Bible tells us, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. 
Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. With the help of the Lord this morning, I would attempt to minister to someone in this house upon this particular thought in mind, and that simply is the breaker and the mender. The breaker and the mender. Would you lay your Bible aside? Let's go to the Lord in prayer over his word this morning. Master, we come before you. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be in your house, to be in your presence. We ask you, Lord God, this morning to anoint the lips of clay, to bring forth the word of the Lord, anoint our minds, our hearts, our ears to hear, and receive what thus saith the word of the Lord. We'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory for it. Let the church said in Jesus' name, Give the Lord another great shout before you're seated. A story is told, you may be seated, God bless you. A story is told of a sculptor who created a beautiful statue of a famous famous biblical figure, of which one I know not. But it is said that upon its completion, people would come from miles around to view its beauty and detail. And some people commenting that it was almost as if the statue itself would come to life as they would look upon it and as they would gaze upon it and stare at it. The intricacies of the statue were beyond anything that they had ever seen before. And on one day, the sculptor who had created the image was present at one of the statue's viewings when someone would shout toward the sculptor, What a masterpiece you have created! To which the sculptor, shouting back, would simply reply, The masterpiece was always there. I just chiseled away everything that was blocking it from view. I preach to this church this morning that when we pray, God make me, what you want me to be. Be careful because he just might. I said when we pray, God, make me what you want me to be. Be careful because he just might. When we kneel at the altar and we begin to pray and we begin to seek his face declaring, God, make me what you want me to be. Be careful because he just might acquiesce to yours and to my request. The Bible says that we were all created in the image of God. But more specifically, God has created us individually to be what he wants us to be. God, I want you to know this morning, has a vision for each and every one of us that have come to this house on this Sunday morning. Psalms 139 and 13 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in thy, my mother's wombs. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. 2 Timothy 1 and 9 declares, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus. Jesus before the world began. So from these scriptures, we can conclude at least three things. Firstly, God has created us both individually and uniquely. Secondly, before we were born, he knew that he what he wanted you and I to become. And thirdly, God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. 
God has taken this block of flesh and bone and muscle and cartilage and as a master sculptor he has begun that great work of shaping us into that which he has purposed us to be and I want to preach to somebody in this house you're not just here by happenstance on another Sunday morning you're not just here because it felt like it was the right thing to do for you and for your family to come to God's house I've come to preach to you God has a plan and a purpose for you and I being here in this service this morning I tell you that he is invested in the progression of his people no wonder that he numbers every footstep it took for you and I to get into the house of God this morning no wonder that he knows the number of hairs on yours and my head because continued progress eventually leads to fulfilled purpose in the Lord And I've come to tell you plainly this morning, God knows exactly where and when He needs to break us and He needs to shape us. He knows exactly where to smooth out the rough edges. He knows exactly how to shape and press and strengthen our vessel because that vessel one day will begin to serve the Lord's purpose. God has a plan and God has a purpose for each and every one of us but as our lives progress we add a lot of things to our lives that hinder us sometimes from accomplishing that purpose we take on a lot of things that we do not need things that are not necessary in our lives and actually keep us keep ourselves from being what God wants us to be That's why Paul spoke to the Christians in Hebrews 12 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. What this morning is a weight? It is simply that which is prominent, that which is bulky, that which has mass to it, that which has us encumbered. Hence, it is a burden to us. And I tell you, anything that becomes prominent in our lives that's not of God, it becomes a weight. Anything that occupies the majority of my time and keeps me from the service of my Lord, it is nothing more than a weight. Thus, when we begin to pray, God make me a man of God or God make me a woman of God sometimes the first thing God has to do is to start chiseling and breaking away at that mass at that bulk at that prominent thing that encumbrance that is keeping us from becoming what he wants us to be I tell you instead of the painter's brush that gently and swiftly strokes And hides the imperfection of the sculpture. He rather takes out the artificer's hammer. And the artificer's chisel. And with each lofty blow. He breaks away at the excess that is upon us. Hear me somebody. Sometimes in order to get us from where we are. To what he wants us to be. God has to break us. He has to chammer and chisel away the things that keep us from living to our true design and our true purpose in the Lord. It isn't always easy and quite frankly it's not always painless. But if we're going to live up to our calling in the Lord it requires the sculptor to become a breaker at times. And he'll break away old relationships that have dulled the beauty of the vessel. He'll break away at habits and hindrances and sin that has attached itself to the sculpture. He'll take a person puffed up with pride, eat up with accolade and eat up with arrogance and he'll chip away at that pride until he uncovers a meek and humble heart. Yes he will. Yes he will. Just ask Naaman. The prophet says to Naaman, God wants you to be healed. I've come to preach to somebody in this house. God wants you to be healed this morning. God wants you to walk away in healing power. The prophet says, God wants you to be healed, Naaman. But that healing is going to come at a price. 
more than what silver or gold or new garments can purchase for you. Today, healing is going to cost you your pride. Dip seven times into the muddy Jordan River and you shall indeed walk away with that healing. At first, Naaman refuses and leaves in anger, declaring that the rivers of Bana and Farfar are cleaner and more suitable for a man like him to bathe in and be clean. Yet neither one of them, I tell you, can meet the conditions that would bring forth the healing that Naaman needed for his life. But behind the scenes, God, in the midst of everything that's taking place on that day, God is slowly chipping away at that foolish pride that's hindering Naaman from coming forth to receive his healing. It makes me wonder sometimes if the real blemishes that God wished to remove from Naaman wasn't leprosy at all, but rather a spirit of pride that clave to him like leprosy and left Naaman from being what he purposed to be in God. And the Bible ultimately tells us in 2 Kings 5. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith unto me, Wash and be clean. If he would have asked you to do something great, Naaman, If he would have asked you to do something mighty, Naaman, would you not have immediately obeyed and done it to its completion? How much more then when he simply says, wash and be clean. That's all you got to do, Naaman. All you got to do is obey the word of the man of God that's going forth. And you can walk away with healing this morning. I tell you, God has as a master artificer that he is. In that moment, God began to break through that barrier of pride. And beneath the prestige and beneath the honor and beneath there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let? I will work and who shall let? And when he comes back to the waiting room where you're slowly anticipating getting ready to leave. He comes back and he identifies three or four things that need to be broke down and repaired right now. If you don't want the future headache of paying for a major overhaul. And we'll get upset and we'll kick, we'll scream and we'll fuss, we'll get ugly And we'll get hard with the mechanic because we just wanted an oil change. We just wanted a blessing to keep us going for a little while longer. But now we've got to make a choice. Let the mechanic do his work or simply leave with a temporary fix that won't get us far. Listen church this morning. We've seen it happen many times. People come to church from one Sunday to the next and they shout and they dance and they get blessed. But for some reason, with all of that blessing that they got, they can't seem to live for God. I said they can't seem to live for God. With all of the great things that take place in the house of God. With the beauty of his majesty that fills this place. And the blessings that are going forth. There's some people they walk away with a mere blessing. But it's not enough to help them live for God. I can hardly fathom it sometimes. That some folks will come in and they'll shout and they'll dance and they'll huck a buck. And they'll do all those great things that us apostolic Pentecostals are known to do. But come Monday morning they've lost the victory and they're right back in the same place where they started all over again. I've seen them shake and I've seen them tremble. I've seen them roll in the floor. I've seen them crawl to the altar on their knees. But beyond the blessing that is given in the moment, they can't seem to live for God beyond the month of Sundays before they're right back where they started again. 
And I've come to preach to somebody in this house, to those people. They didn't just need a blessing, let me tell you. They didn't just need just a touch from God. Honey, let me tell you, they needed a breakthrough for their lives. They needed a breakthrough from addiction. They needed a breakthrough from besetting sin. They needed a breakthrough from hindering attitudes. But you can't get a breakthrough unless you're willing to first let God break you. Come on, somebody give him praise right now. I'm here to tell you somebody, you can't get a breakthrough unless you're first willing to let God break you. And wouldn't you know it, the final words of the mechanic, I had one say this to me once. After I got done kicking and after I got done fussing about the bill, got my keys, got in my car and ready to pull out of the parking lot, he just smiles at me and he waves and he says, we'll see you soon. To get those repairs taken care of. Come on today. We'll see you soon. To get that problem you have fixed. Sounds like Jesus to some of us doesn't it? I said it sounds like Jesus to some of us doesn't it? I'll see you soon. You need more than an oil change. You need more than a blessing. But that's alright. When you're ready to come back. We'll take care of those repairs for you. Hear me somebody, if I harden myself, God will let me continue in my folly for a while. If I refuse to let God sculpt me into the person he wants me to be, he'll indeed lead me alone for a while until I reach the place where that weight and that mass, that situation and that circumstance, that encumbrance becomes so heavy in my life that I need him to break me and remove the thing that's hindering me from being what he has purposed me to be if you don't believe me this morning take a look at Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 17 it simply declares to us Ephraim is joined to idols what does God say he simply says let him alone Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Understand it was Ephraim, one of the adopted sons of Jacob, the one of whom Jacob at his death would extend the right hand of blessing, that is being the greater blessing, to him instead of his older brother Manasseh. No wonder Ephraim's name, now listen to this, Ephraim's name means doubly fruitful. Doubly fruitful. What a shame that a man who was born, a man who was purposed to be doubly fruitful, never fulfilled his true potential in God. Instead, we read about Ephraim, and this is what we read. Ephraim armed with bow that turned back in the day of battle, Psalm 78 verse 9. It was Ephraim that in Psalm 78, 67 and 68 declares moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. All because Ephraim refused to let God break away the idols that he had taken into his life. Listen this morning, somebody, God will not force himself on anyone. Our God is a perfect gentleman. He will make the recommendation of what needs to be done, but he won't force you to allow him to work on you. But I tell you this morning, if you don't let him fix it today, if you don't let him fix it, why his spirit is moving in this house on this Sunday morning. You think that the bill is expensive now and that it's not worth being broken. But you wait too long and you'll eventually find out that a complete overhaul will cost you far more in the long run than what it could have been. If you just let God do his work and fix the problem at the very beginning. What am I saying this morning? I'm simply saying. We have to reach a place to where we allow God not just to bless us. Don't get me wrong. I want to be blessed. 
Don't let the devil twist the word right there. God wants to bless us. He will bless and we shall be blessed. But we have to understand that there comes a time that becoming blessed requires God to first break us. I want to be blessed. I don't want to be cursed. And I don't think anybody else in this house does either. I could have gotten that anywhere else. But not in the house of God. We come to be blessed. But God says, I see what you're carrying. And I can't bless you until I break you. Sometimes God says, I can't give you what you want until I break away your pride. Until I break away the complacency. Until I break away the besetting sin. I want to give you what you need. But in order for me to give you what you need. I got to do a little work. And I got to break you for a few moments. So I can get some things that's in your spirit back out of you again. Before you can get truly blessed of God. Jeremiah verse 18 says to us. Then I went down to the potter's house. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Jeremiah, he went down to the potter's house and discovered that the potter had a vision for the clay. I want you to know once again this morning, from my heart of hearts, God has a vision for each and every one of you. God has a vision for every person that has assembled themselves together at First Pentecostal Church of Paris, Texas this morning. He has a vision for you, and He has a vision for me. If that clay was pliable in the potter's hand, It could be mashed, it could be spun in circles, it could be reformed, it could be reshapen. Doesn't matter what the condition it is. If it's pliable, he can do a work with it. Doesn't matter how it came to him. As long as it's pliable in the hands of the potter, he can do a work on the wheel. And eventually, it would become a beautiful, useful vessel. Unto the Lord. But if the potter found any blemishes. Any rough spots. Any areas that may need additional attention. He would take that vessel. And he would simply break it. If it wasn't what he wanted it to be. If it didn't look like the vision. That he had originally anticipated of that vessel. He would take that vessel off of that wheel and he would break it and he would grind it to dust add a little water and begin to mash and he begin to press and he would begin to mend that clay all over again until it was fit unto his liking and unto his desire hear me somebody you can't mend something that has not first become broken can I preach to you this morning I said you can't mend something that hasn't been broken. But thanks be to God that when my spirit's not right and my thoughts are tossed to and fro and there are things that need to be broken away before I can be restored, I'm glad to know that when God breaks me, He's not putting me back together like I was before. I'm glad when he takes me off the potter's wheel and I'm not what he wants me to be. He doesn't throw me away, but he just breaks me and he begins to do the work all over again. And when he puts me back together, he doesn't put me back together the way I was before. He's getting rid of the rubbish and he's making something altogether other out of me. I tell you, In that moment, I'm glad to know that our God isn't just a breaker. But I want somebody in this house to hear me this morning. My God is also a mender. Come on, somebody. I said the God that you and I serve, he's not just a breaker. But he's also a mender. And he's able to bind up wounds 
in a way that will perfect his healing in me. He's able to take what I thought to be broken pieces of shattered hopes and dreams. And because he is a mender, he's able to put them back together again in a way that brings new life. New life and unforeseen potential that I never thought in my wildest dreams that there could ever be. I tell you, he may have to break me. But oh, the joy of knowing that when he puts me back together again, he's not mending me the same way that he broke me. And when I come off of the potter's wheel, no matter how many times he's got to break me and how many times he's got to mend me to get me just the way that he wants me to be, I want you to know I'm going to come off of that wheel different than I once was. I'm going to come off of that wheel changed. I'm going to come off of that wheel transitioned. I'm going to come off of that wheel transformed. I'm going to come off of that wheel renewed, reshaped, refreshed, and restored. Old things are passed away, and now I have become new. I have become new I want to preach to somebody this morning I don't care how far you've come And where you've been It doesn't matter how old Or how brittle the clay has become When he breaks it And he begins to mend it together again Out of old clay He is able to make something new Every single time Come on, give him a praise offering right now. Doesn't matter how far I've fallen. Doesn't matter where I come from. Doesn't matter what sin that he had to pull me out of. I've come to preach to you this morning out of old clay. He is able to make something new out of me because he's not just a breaker. He is a mender. Now watch this this morning. Some folks, they believe that broken things have less value. Less value than before they were broken. Can I say that again? Some people believe that broken things have less value than before they were broken. But it is astonishing That in this day and in this hour, the market for broken things are higher than they've ever been. Me and my wife and my boys, we stopped down on the square yesterday when we came into Paris. And there's about three or four antique shops there. And for most people, unless you're someone like us that likes antique things, You probably wouldn't step foot inside one of those stores because all you think there's in there is a bunch of rubbish and broken stuff. But I've come to tell you, the market for broken things in this hour is higher than it's ever been before. They call it shabby chic. But I've come to preach to you this morning. When it comes to the master mender, what he does with old broken pieces of clay is all but shabby. And it's more than chic. In Japan, there is a certain art of repairing broken pottery. They simply call it kitsugi. Instead of deeming the pottery as worthless and throwing it away, the potter merely mends the areas of breakage with a pliable lacquer, dusted or mixed with gold, listen now, gold, silver, or in some cases, even platinum. While the end result may highlight some of the imperfections of where the pottery was broken, it also highlights the vision of the potter to prove that even broken things have value. Come on, are you feeling me this morning? You just need a potter that's willing to take that broken clay and invest himself in that clay's restoration. 2 Corinthians 4 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 
I tell you if you look closely in this room you will find vessels that may look, not look broken but if you look a little harder you'll see the visible markings left by the master mender where the clay was formerly broken but he mended that clay with the gospel his word more precious than gold or silver and he joined every jagged and broken piece together with the pliable power of his presence we make much about the treasure that's within the vessel and so should we but I tell you what's holding the vessel together on the outside is a far greater consequence than what's on the inside of the vessel because without the master mender, without the joining agents of his word and of his spirit, the vessel couldn't hold the contents of any greater calling, any greater blessing, any greater healing, or any greater promise. It would still be empty and broken. But thank God, I know a mender this morning. Come on, somebody. Thank God. He didn't leave me the same way that he found me. He didn't leave me bleeding and dying on the Jericho road. But he picked me up. He poured in oil and wine. He set my feet on straight street. He put me back together again. And I'll no longer be the same person that I once was. Woo. Because he's a master mender. As I close this morning and our musicians make their way. I want you to understand. That when I've become broken. Whether it be because I allowed God to break me. Or whether I came to him shattered from sin. Broken from bitterness. Cracked from circumstance. Regardless of how it happened, not just anybody can put me back together again. I exercise a word of caution to tell you this morning. Be careful the people you associate yourself with. And be careful the people you confide yourself in. Because not just anybody can put you back together again. Not just anybody can solve the situations and the circumstances of your life. But I've come to preach to you today. I know of one in the house of God who can. Not just anybody can put me back together again. Hear me this morning. I don't need a lawyer. I don't need a psychiatrist. I don't need a program. I don't need a prescription. What I need is a sculptor. What I need is an artificer. What I need is a potter. I need a master mender that can put me back together again and restore me in his presence. Jeremiah 18 tells us once again, Verse number four. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. It was marred. That simply means that it was disfigured. It was messed up. It was broken. It was unjoined. It couldn't hold itself together. times that some of us look in the mirror when we get up out of the bed in the morning and we look at ourselves and in our hearts of hearts we know that we're not where we need to be and we know that we're not following the leading of the Lord like we should be and we can tell as we look ourselves in the mirror that we're broken do everything in that mirror to fix ourselves up to hide the fact that there are blemishes and that there are things in our lives that we can't fix and that we can't do on our own things that we've tried and we've tried and we've tried to put 
it back together on our own. We'll put a smile on our face. We'll come to the house of God. We'll shake each other's hand. We'll high five. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But oftentimes, we are the masters of a masquerade. while we put on the smile we put on the prim we put on the polish so that nobody else knows what's going on in our lives and nobody else knows that everything's falling apart around us nobody else knows our situation nobody else knows our circumstances slide by we'll find our place on the pew we'll praise when it's time to praise we'll dance when it's time to dance we'll give when it's time to give and think that nobody notices that I don't have it together yet I've come to tell you the eyes of God never sleep nor slumber he sees the breakdown that you had in your bedroom the other night. And he sees the argument you have with your wife. And he sees the turmoil in your home. The things that are going on on your job. The pressure of this world. The cares of this life bearing down harder than it ever has upon you. And he looks past the man. tells Jeremiah you look at what's taking place on that potter's wheel that clay was marred in the hand of the potter it wasn't what he wanted it to be and so he made it again another vessel that seemed good for the potter to make it as we all stand to our feet today I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost Only you know today what we've come bearing. Only you know today the burden, the situation, and the circumstances that fill this room. I'm asking you this morning, Father, for you to look past the mass and reach down to the depths of men and women's hearts who have entered into this house and begin to do a work on that wheel of you. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Somebody said, Brother White, that's cute. But I don't know how a nursery rhyme can help a circus like this. But I tell you that it wasn't long ago that God gave me a revelation out of a nursery rhyme. Somebody said, Brother White, why can't the king's horses and why can't the king's men put Humpty Dumpty back together again? I've come to tell somebody it's because the art of mending is something that only the king can do. I said the art of mending is something that only the king can do.
Only the king can mend a broken heart. Only the king can put the broken pieces of a life ravaged by sin back together. Only the king knows how to bind up the wounds of the broken. Only the king knows how to mend that which is broken and make it beautiful again. Psalms tells us the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, oh God, thou wilt not despise. I've come to preach to this congregation. The king's horses and the king's men can't do it. A prophet cannot put you back together again. An evangelist can't put you back together again. This preacher right here, I can't put you back together again. But I've come to tell you, I can take you to the one who can. I said I can take you to the one who can. When I'm broken, get me to the king. When my spirit breaks, get me to the king. When I fall and my vessel breaks, get me to the king. And the king shall do what only he can. He'll pick up the pieces and he'll put me back together again. Sometimes we need him to be a breaker. But thank God when I'm broken in that moment, he becomes my mender. Come on, somebody. Would you come to the king today? Would you come this morning? Would you take off the mask? Would you quit playing the masquerade? And come humbly and earnestly unto the king. I've come to tell you, you'll leave with what you have need of. You'll leave repaired. You'll leave restored. You'll leave different than the way you came. He's here this morning to move on your life. He's here today to pick up the pieces. He doesn't throw the clay away. And if you'll come and you'll give him your heart and you'll lift up your voice and you'll cry out to God, I'm telling you, the king will take you. He'll place you on the potter's wheel and he'll mend you back together all over again. Come on, somebody, let's pray. Let's seek his face. Let's seek his hand. Let's seek his touch.